Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I'm showing you guys how we can simplify our Shuffle SOAR implementation to integrate it easily with our existing Seam stack. So stick around and we'll jump into it. So if you guys aren't familiar with Shuffle, Shuffle is a open source SOAR, which you can use to create your own, uh, what they call workflows to automate a lot of various tasks within your Seam stack or really with anything that you're trying to do. The use cases are pretty endless when it comes to what you can actually develop with Shuffle. And Shuffle kind of takes the complexity of uh, programming and makes it a little easier to work with. Now, I have done a video in the past in terms of installing Shuffle. And if you're familiar with that, you guys will also know that Shuffle incorporates a lot of various different services to actually make it uh, function properly. It's depending on a front end, a back end, a Orberus worker, a open search container as well. So there's a lot of different services that can make the installation and maintenance part of your own Shuffle environment a little complex. Well, thankfully Shuffle has actually addressed this to make the deployment and getting started with Shuffle a lot easier, which also allows you to leverage your existing infrastructure that may be running within your data center. So we're actually going to use Shuffle's cloud um, to host our front end. And then what we're going to deploy on our one of our VMs running within our local data center that has access to our Seam stack is going to be that Shuffle Orberus container or I'll refer to it as just like the Shuffle worker. So what this will allow us to do is craft workflows within Shuffle's cloud environment but gives us the ability to automate with our local Seam stack because we have a worker container running within our local environment. So now I kind of get the best of both worlds in terms of a hybrid approach. I don't have to have Shuffle's front end, uh, the open search container. I don't have to have maintaining, upgrading that piece. Shuffle is going to automatically do that. The Shuffle team is gonna automatically uh, do that within their cloud infrastructure. and. I can deploy the Shuffle VM and I can deploy the Shuffle worker within my local environment with one simple command, which I'll show you guys here in a sec. So that's kind of the, the topology of it. We're really kind of leveraging a hybrid approach where pretty much 95% of everything is being done within Shuffle's cloud. But the actual implementation of running the workflow against our local Seam stack is going to happen within our local data center. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So if you guys haven't already uh, created a Shuffle account, then you will first need to create an account. This is still leveraging their open source offering. There are no licenses or costs that comes with um, that comes with creating and deploying your own your own worker container. So this all is still 100% free. If you haven't already, you will need to first create an account. And here I have logged in. I'll also link to Shuffle's cloud environment within the description below so you guys can get started and follow along. So once I've created my account, I'm gonna go ahead and go into organization here, just on our organization overview. I have my Sock Fortress organization. Another cool thing as well is if I'm a MSSP, I can also have sub organizations under my parent organization. So I can manage other uh, clients of my shuffle environment very easily. And again, because Shuffle is handling uh, the front end, the open search container, all the extra stuff outside of the Shuffle worker, uh, it eases the, the maintenance that I have to do for my clients as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into environments here. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select add environment. Here I'll just give an environment name. So this would be like the environment where uh, the worker is actually deployed, something that it'll be easy to know. This is the exact environment where my worker is deployed at. Here I'll just call it like, I don't know, YouTube data center. I'll go ahead and submit that. And here we can see we now have a command that we can copy. So if I copy this command and go onto the VM that is actually going to be running this worker, now I am on the shuffle worker locally within my data center. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that command in here. And we have some details tying it to that uh, particular organization and the authorization but you don't really need to understand any of this. Um, one thing, one comment I actually do wanna make before running, you do wanna make sure that this 
VM Docker settings have been configured for, for your local DNS server. So here within my Etsy Docker daemon.json, which I've defined also my internal DNS servers so that when it comes to creating my workflows within Shuffle, I can actually use the host name rather than just the straight IP address. Of course, I could still use the straight IP address, but I like to use host names where I can. So here's a little tip to be able to leverage your internal host names that you've assigned to the servers making up your Seam stack um, to make sure to point your Docker settings to the internal DNS. That's a whole nother <laughs> conversation that can be had. So let me go ahead and copy this command again here. And back on my VM, I'm gonna paste this. We now have our container running. So if I do a Docker PS, and if I search for my shuffle uh, Orbis latest, here I have the uh, Docker image, so I can do like a Docker. Here I have the container ID, so I can say Docker logs, and I'll just go ahead and say follow to make sure everything's getting uh, brought up correctly. I do have the latest image already. If this is your first time running it, you will see it downloading the image. Uh, of the container. All this is looking normal. So here we can actually see it try to authenticate with the shuffle front end. And here we see my uh, environment being set to the YouTube data center. We now have shuffle up and running within my local environment. And what should also occur as well, if, if I refresh this page, here we see my IP address is also being pulled in as well. Now let's actually create a workflow off of this. So if I go into workflows, I'll just select like new workflow. And here, let's just do one called test. And then I'll show you guys how we can just do a quick little integration with Wazoo, my local Wazoo uh, manager that's also running within my Seam stack. You can select what environment this will particularly run on. Let's say I'm doing like a curl request out to somewhere that's on like the public internet and I don't want that to run within my data center. Well, here I can leverage Shuffle's cloud to actually do that for me. So I don't actually have to run it on the worker that is running within my local data center. So I can go ahead and select the environment where I want this to run in. And here, if I save and just select play, um, a new worker has been created and it's tailing the logs of that. So that's all looking good. And then here I get my response back. If I say, instead of hello world, I say, please subscribe, we'll get the same thing. This workflow is being executed on my local node, my shuffle worker node within my environment rather than within shuffles infrastructure. Let's actually use a uh, real world wazoo example here. So let me go ahead and go into workflows and I'll say, I don't know, wazoo list agent. So in this workflow, what we're gonna interact with wazoo's API with the, the wazoo manager API. And again, this guy is gonna be sitting as a tool within my local Seam stack. So I couldn't leverage Shuffle's cloud environment because it doesn't have access to my data center right, where my local Shuffle worker guy does, and then we're gonna feed the results back up to Shuffle's cloud. I can actually get rid of that node. I don't, we first need to select our Wazoo app here. And if I select this app and select authenticate Wazoo, there's actually kind of an extra step that we need to do with authenticating, with getting a JWT token as we're interacting with Wazoo's manager. They have a command here. So what we can do is go ahead and copy this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and delete. Since this is a curl, I'm gonna select the HTTP uh, app here and my environment, I'm gonna set to YouTube data center. And then I'm going to select curl for actions and I can open up my window here and paste this guy in here. Uh, and then I'm gonna remove uh, our brackets here and then all the way up to there. Here's our curl command, which will be used to get the JWT token with the Wazoo manager. Uh, Wazoo's default API credentials are uh, Wazoo WUI and then Wazoo WUI. These are as well going to be your username and then your password. And then here we need to change localhost to the actual host name of our Wazoo manager. If I copy my local host name and I'm gonna replace local host with the host name, this as well can be an IP address, but again, since I set my internal DNS setting within uh, that Docker, that the Docker server, I can use a host name and the container is going to be able to resolve it just fine. So 
I'll go ahead and submit this guy and let's actually, uh, let's give this guy a test and run it out and make sure that we get our token back. So if I select save here, and now if I run this, we get our result back. So that's looking good. I can explore the logs uh, directly within Shuffle's front end as well. So if there's any uh, debugging or anything that needs to take place, I get those details here. And then I can as well always expand out and see the actual command that was ran and uh, the response and everything as, as well. Another nice advantage of using Shuffle's uh, front end cloud is there's a lot more debugging already preset that I don't necessarily have to define within my local environment. And it was one simple command to go ahead and actually deploy my own local uh, shuffle worker and then I can leverage shuffles cloud for everything else. So now let's actually list out the agent. So we've got our uh, authorization token, so that's good. So what we're gonna do is use what we uh, collected from the previous command. And actually, let me replace the name of this to auth underscore token so it's obvious what action this node is doing. What I'm gonna do here is, so find actions. Let me search for like list agents. Yeah, so I'll select the list agents here. For my API key, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the result of the auth token node. So here, I'm gonna just select the plus icon to autocomplete and I'm gonna select auth token. What that means is that we are going to take the value that we got from this, which would be this JWT token here, and we're gonna use that as our API key for, uh, for any following request that we want to make. In this example, we're just listing out the agents from Wazoo. I can also change my name, list agents. And my URL, again, I'm gonna change that to be the host name of my Wazoo manager. Again, actually, I'll actually use the IP address to show you guys. So if I ping that guy, here we're resolving uh, to this IP address. So I can actually also use this value as well, just to show you guys as an example. Uh, and then that's it. So I've configured that. We're using the, the get list agent. So now when we save and run this, our, our lo local shuffle worker is first going to uh, get a JWT token because it's going to log in. Um, to our Wazoo manager. And then we're going to make a, a subsequent API call to list out the agents, um, which we should see here in a sec. And sure enough, so here we got a response back if we expand this out. Um, okay, good, we didn't get any error messages, good. So I can now start to drill down to Wazoo's exact uh, API response that we got back as part of the list agents API. All right, so here, we, here we're getting all the details for our agents, uh, their status, for example, as well. Upgrading agents is something that you could automate, and here you can see all of the operations that you can run via Wazoo's API. So you can create your own use cases, and depending on what problem you're looking to solve, now we have a super, super quick and easy way to do it. We simplify the uh, maintenance and maintaining of, of running a healthy shuffle environment by taking this hybrid approach of having an on-prem um, shuffle worker and then leveraging shuffles cloud to do the front end where we are uh, creating our workflows. But this allows us to uh, have really the best of both worlds in terms of I can still interact with my local seam stack but shuffle is handing the complexity and intricacies of making sure my environment is not only healthy, but also up to date uh, with the latest updates. Big shout out to the Shuffle team for what they've accomplished here in terms of uh, being able to add these environments where you can locally do your own things. It's a awesome, awesome feature. I definitely recommend implementing this within your own environments. But of course, if you do still want to host everything locally, you still have the ability to do that as well. This is just a great alternative to running your own open source SOAR platform. That's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.